It was famously said by Senator Ted Stevens of Alaska that the internet is made of a series of tubes. But do we actually know what the internet is made of? Hey y'all, Trace here, exposing the mysteries of the internet for DNews. Outside of the web browser on your ridiculously LED-lit gaming computer rig or your sleek aluminum laptop, what does the internet actually look like? How does it work? I've done the virtual legwork to figure out exactly where the internet lives IRL. Firstly, the internet as we know it is just that, an interconnected network of computers. Servers or hosts store the websites, provide data to the clients, that's you. And in 1969, there were only four host computers and only a few nodes, they called them. Four. Yeah. Now millions of computers host websites with nodes spread across the planet and even in space. The hosts are controlled by individuals, companies, and governments, which is why no single entity really controls or owns the internet. To connect from your laptop to anywhere else involves lots of steps through those nodes. Assuming you're wired directly into it, your modem is your first node. It has its own IP address and is connected via your cable or DSL line to another modem at your internet service provider. The ISP has local connection points like highway on-ramps, but for the internet, they're really windowless climate-controlled buildings filled with computers called a point of presence or POP. The ISP modems are then networked together with fiber optic cable to a network access point or NAP in a larger city or region. That's another node. Then, in major cities, Comcast or Time Warner or AT&T or whoever else all come together, connect their NAPs, and make the network larger still. Finally, the major cities are connected via giant groups of fiber optic bundles and more giant windowless buildings, allowing petabytes of data to stream through. This is called the Internet Backbone. In 1987, the National Science Foundation created the first high-speed backbone, allowing 170 networks to connect together. Now there are high-capacity backbones connecting networks across the globe. These trunk cables lay off the coasts of countries on the floor of the world's oceans. They're alight with data as computers talk to each other, sending cat videos and tweets and email around the earth at the speed of light. So let's say someone types facebook.com into their browser on their computer. That text is translated into a packet, and each packet is sent to their ISP. The ISP routes those packets somewhere else through the system, and they do it in this way in case a circuit fails or gets bogged down. Then the data can split up and travel along different paths to the same place. The ISP uses a domain name server, or DNS, to find out what Facebook.com's IP address is. It's huge, so it's got a lot of possible IP addresses. Once the computer knows the IP, your data goes through to the POPs and the NAPs to access Facebook's computers. Once you're connected, Facebook takes over and pulls from their own data centers in Oregon or Sweden, or there's gonna be a new one in Iowa or somewhere else. So if you think about it, Senator Stevens, he was kinda right. The internet is kinda, sorta, made of tubes. This seems like a lot of work to to stalk your ex's new bow, doesn't it? What's your favorite part about the internet? Let us know in the comments, click subscribe, and we'll see you on your next Nap Connection.